Good evening YouTube, welcome back to Let's Play Felsil Arbiter's Mark with Pluton. So last time we left off we just had the battle at Giam Tor and Alphonse had once again escaped our grasp. So let's check if we've got any new skills we can equip, should do for most of our characters. So our character can level up our mercenary. Um, now actually we've got the choice of Precise Strike or Mind Strike here, but I'm not too enamoured with either of them. I think we're going to save our AP and get Sturdy Grip, um, which is going to allow us to use a two-handed weapon with one hand, and that will obviously let us equip a shield as well. So this, I think it's one of the most powerful um, mercenary abilities because you're going to get huge damage out of the, the two-handed weapon and extra defence for your, for your shield, so we'll save up and hopefully get that after the next battle. Uh, Reiner, so we have finally opened up all of the levels of the Scoundrel uh, map here. Now this sneak attack I think is probably one of the best abilities in the early game. Um, it's going to give significantly increased damage from the sides or back. Uh, when it says significant it does mean it. You can pretty much one shot anyone if he gets a, a back attack um, and that's going to be uh, combined with this passive to have the um, 24 plus 1 level um, attack damage, so he's going to become a bit of a monster. Um, we will take exploit weaknesses next time for the critical hit percentage, but that's not as guaranteed as sneak attack, and with his ability to move around the map a lot easier than other people, it's going to make him very, very powerful. But we'll take that. Next up is Anadine. So I think for now we'll just take uh, Flash Striker for her, as we did with uh, Kairi. Always good to miss out on the enemy's counter abilities. Virgil. Um, now we have the option of either taking his counter to um, counter any enemy casting a spell on him by uh, casting a non-elemental version of it back. Um, this will be useful, but I think just now we want to take the Water 2 and Fire 2 because it's going to be a pretty significant increase in damage for him. This is where Virgil is now going to start coming into his own um, and the apparent fondness of the AI trying to take him down at any cost is, is going to become apparent. And he's also unlocked the Alchemist, but we're not going to be touching on that at the moment. Lana for the Mender class. so. A little bit of a difficult decision here, she can either take heal 2, which is pretty much going to fully heal anyone from from down to zero, um, or we could go back and take revive. Um, it's a bit of a toss up, um, I think we'll go with heal 2 for now because generally characters will finish the run turn with a, a little bit of HP um, and she can, she can get back in full strength. Uh, Rayfen on the night, so... To be quite honest, I don't think Thorns is worth taking unless you already have everything else unlocked. Um, it's a very small amount of damage um, that the, the counter actually does, so we'll save up and, and go for something else on the next round. And that's everyone, so we did get a little bit of money from that battle, so let's head back to the, the most close shop. Oh no, we have a cutscene instead. <laughs> And as he says, I wish we had managed to catch Lord Alphonse earlier. Don't trouble yourself about it, Anadine. Alphonse is cornered. This is the only pa path in or out of the temple. Now that we have a moment to talk, I wanted to commend you for spotting those additional enemy forces up on the ridge. Uh, if we had rushed ahead and gotten flanked, things could have turned ugly. Well, they did anyway, that was thanks to my silly play. Thanks, Kyrie. What are we going to do next? We'll camp here for the night and keep guard over the approach to the temple. I don't want to risk him slipping past us in the dark. At first light, we'll strike out for the temple and end this once and for all. Hmm. Oh dear, who's this? Wow. What the? I think this is one of the immortals. Quintus? This is quite a surprise, sir. What do we owe the honour of your visit? I wish to speak to the captain, privately. Oh, one wanders off. You too, Rhino. Off he goes. You have always inspired great loyalty in him. 
We are family after all. Oh, don't know about that. Yes, now I remember. His parents adopted you at an early age. I noticed that Rhino is just standing back off to the side. He's not really giving us privacy. Well, what could I... Would that I had come simply to engage in idle chit-chat. The council was convened this evening for another surprise meeting where I was told a mark by the name of Alphonse was attacked by your group. There was an altercation earlier today, that's true. I wonder what the, all the news concerning this particular lord travels so quickly. I took note of that myself, but leave it aside for the time being. I was informed you invoked the right of self-defence in the face of mortal danger as a means of skirting our earlier prohibition against interfering with any of the marked. An accurate, if creative, interpretation of the law. And from what I know of this, Alphonse, I have no doubt your claim was justified. In that case, I confess I do not understand why you're here, Quintus. Ever so direct. The issue is that while I personally agree with your interpretation of the law, the Council took a vote and the majority are against it. I'm here in my official to capacity to curb your enthusiasm. Mm. However, I wish to propose a different direction for your uh, zeal. You must have noticed in recent years how the Arbiters and the Council have grown progressively less effective. Primus, Tertia and myself have attempted to take things in hand to correct the current course, but it seems as though our efforts have been constantly stymied. Though I have been unable to uncover the guilty party hindering our work, the trail circles back to the Council itself. The protection afforded this unsavoury Alphonse character is but one more sign that things have gone terribly awry, and I suspect it is part of a greater, more sinister plan. I understand, Quintus. I will support you in whatever course of action you deem best. Good. I'm glad to hear you say that, as I don't think you will particularly like my solution, oh dear. Captain Cowdery, I have not yet nominated my own mark, but I believe I have found just the right candidate. To have a reliable immortal candidate on our side would certainly be welcome. My thoughts exactly. I need someone who champions doing the right thing above all else. Someone with integrity. Someone incorruptible. Hmm, I can see where this is going. Kairi, I am nominating you to be my marked candidate. Me? I am flattered you would trust me with such a grave responsibility. But I must decline. I have no desire to join the ranks of the immortals. I know, and that's another reason why you're so perfectly suited to the task. I will speak plainly. I sense a growing corruption within the Council. As you can imagine, rooting out this evil, and quickly, is of the utmost importance. I need an ally, Kairi. As a march, you'll no longer be bound by the law. You'll be free to pursue our funds and investigate the situation in any fashion you see fit. And once the conspirators are brought to justice, the council will have a worthy member to fill the void of Primus stepping down. Hmm. There is a certain sense in your plan, but surely there must be someone else, another candidate you could select. Hmm. You're trying my patience, Kyrie. I presented this duty in the form of an offer, but no one may refuse the candidacy of a marked, especially not an arbiter. Hmm. I see. When I become when I became an arbiter, I pledged to obey the mortals and the immortals and all things. I'm glad we're finally in accord. Come, come. Being a marked isn't some kind of curse. You'll find yourself even more powerful than before. Oh. Well, so we're getting transformed. It's done. I pronounce you one of the marked. I know that you will continue to serve us well. You are now able to enter temples, something impossible to anyone but a Mart, forbidden even to we immortals. The goal of the Mart pilgrimage is to visit the four temples and commune with the relics housed therein. With the Mark upon you, the relic will confer some of its energy to you. Visit the relics in all four temples and then return to Illustor. 
That, in essence, is what the pilgrimage entails. Oh, and keep your wits about you during your journey. I have a feeling some skullduggery is afoot within the pilgrimage, and you don't get to be my age without listening to your hunches. Now, shall I leave you in the care of the worried Reiner? <laughs> and off he goes. I wonder if we'll get a teleport ability in future. Kairi, is everything okay? What just happened? You were standing right there. Yes, I am alright. Quintus selected me to be his marked candidate. The magic takes a toll. The feeling is strange and not entirely pleasant, but I'll get used to it. I must. Oh. This is big. <laughs> you could become one of the immortals. Indeed. I'm going to need some time to get used to this. Now that I'm undertaking the pilgrimage, our new objective is to visit the temple. Though I'm sure we'll still have our funds to deal with one on the way. Alright, but for now get some rest. You look exhausted. You can fill me in on the details later. Well, there we go, quite a big development. Kairi has become a marked. This grants her access to a special class with powerful abilities. Give her new class a new a look in the troops menu. Well, that's exactly what I was just thinking of doing. Let's see what she's got. So... Marked. Wow. Okay, so first ability is Dark Bolt. Deals 0.95 damage of attack and mind to the target from a distance. So it's going to be a um, magical attack range up to three tiles on a single target. So that's going to be pretty strong. Attack plus mind. Uh, and 0.95 of that is going to be a, probably about equivalent to, to Virgil's Water 2 spell. Um, just browsing through the the class tree here, so we've got Wrathful Blow, uh, it's going to do 1.6 times attack damage to the target, but also damages the character by a quarter of their current HP, let's see. Uh, first passive ability is Execute, damage from offensive abilities is increased by 0.45 when a target's HP is below 0.5 of their maximum, alright, so she'd be good at finishing off low level, or low health enemies rather. Um, well, that gives a little bit of an idea of this uh, class tree for now it seems we're sort of hybrid uh, caster um, with a bit of kind of lick abilities at the same time uh, it's going to be interesting to, to unlock and work through um, I think for now we'll actually we'll keep her on the mercenary uh, class just for now to get sturdy grip because that'll, that'll turn around a bit of a monster to be honest if you can use a, a maul at the same time as having um, ranged magical abilities so one more battle should get us up to the 250 we need for, for that particular ability. Um, I think in this case we'll actually hold off, we could go back to the shop with the little bit of money we've got, but I don't see the next uh, battle actually being that much more difficult. Um, although in saying that, Kairi is going to have to uh, use pot potentially different um, equipment for a new class, let's just double check that now. So a marked can use Maul, sword, spear, or or a rod. It's interesting. I wonder if we could spec her more heavily into using her uh, spell abilities. Um, and she can use robe, light armor, heavy armor, or shield. So in actual fact, her armor isn't too much different, and I think we're going to get her to use the maul anyway. So let's go back to the shop for now. And the only thing we won't do is get her a new weapon at this very second. And we'll see if we can gear anyone else up at the same time. <laughs> this couple is still very amorous running their shop. So, starting off with Kairi, I think she already has yeah the highest level of uh, equipment she can get. We might get her an accessory. Um, probably best just to go with the Shining Band for now, gives her good all round stat upgrade and immunity to blind. Rainer thinks the same story, he's already got good uh, equipment. As does Anodine. Ah, okay, so we can upgrade Virgil to the Cotton Robe. It's going to give him a 60 magical resistance, it's pretty good. And he obviously has the hat. <laughs> 
Um, same for Lana, let's get her the cotton rope. Raven, oh she can actually upgrade her weapon to the boar spear, that's that's good. I don't know if we had that unlocked last time we visited, but we've got that now. She has the shield and the armor's good, so with the remaining fun time, which we've got just about two and a half thousand, um, got enough for one or two accessories. I think actually we might get the pure band for Virgil and Lana. If that gives them immunity to poison, that's quite a boost because we don't have to, want to have to be healing them up, them up constantly. Lana actually already has a shining band as well, so <laughs> we have just enough money. I think what we're going to be left with here down to sixty-seven GP. So <laughs> that's worked out perfectly. Okay, so I think we'll leave off here for now, and on the next video we'll head to the encounter in the Highlands. Um, and hopefully after that get Kairi onto her new March class, which is going to be very interesting. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.